Today on Combustion Chamber Live, we're here at Cars and Coffee Central Florida, the premier Cars and Coffee for this area. Let's get after it. Hey everybody, my name is Jonathan Springer and I'm a realtor with the Network Property Group. We help people buy and sell homes all across the state of Florida, but I'm here at Cars and Coffee Central Florida to be your real estate resource in the Central Florida market. If you see me out, if you have any questions, or friends or family, they have questions about the real estate market, please come over and say hi and introduce yourself, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, let's get things started off right this morning with this gorgeous Lexus brought out by Deus Auto. Great, great looking car. I think one of Lexus's uh, prettiest cars, one of their late model cars. Uh, great color combination. Love the blue with the two-tone wheels, the chrome and the black with those orange calipers. Really set it off. But the that kind of idea runs throughout the interior as well. So you've got the that beautiful cream white color. You've got the blue and then you've got that orange there. Really nice, nice looking car. Would love to get this on combustion chamber. You know, we might. You should subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications because if we do put this on, on it as an episode, you'll be the first to know when it goes live. Right here we have a second gen Audi R8 V10 powered, a great car. Uh, shares a lot in common with Lamborghini, of course, but still uh, it's got its own styling. Very interesting that they decided to break this carbon fiber wing here. Well, it's not really a wing. I forget what they call it, Audi calls it, but on the Gen 1s, it was fully connected, so it ran from the here all the way down. Still a great looking car. We recently had an Audi R80 first gen, highly modified, very custom car on our show. So check that out. And over here, we've got a Ferrari 488 GTV, a great, great car. Uh, one of their, not naturally aspirated, this would be a turbo powered car. I believe this has a V8 twin turbo setup. So, you know, Ferrari, like a lot of auto manufacturers, are moving to turbo setups uh, and some hybrid assist and things like that throughout their range. Uh, the naturally aspirated cars are going by the wayside, actually. Uh, for the time being, Lamborghini uh, is one of the manufacturers that are still doing that. But this is a great car, really fantastic. And it's nice to see all the cars out here today at this show. This does support Nemours Children's Hospital, so it's not just a show your car and have a good time, which that's important too, but a much more important cause is Nemours Children's Hospital. And of course, we got a beautiful Porsche right here in that sort of, I don't know what they call it. Manufacturers are making this version of this color, this sort of ash gray kind of color. Very popular right now, and this is a good package. I think that with the black wheels and the yellow calipers, it all ties itself together very well. But one of my favorite cars here today is this GT3 RS, specifically a 991 GT3 RS. This was on our show. I got to drive this car, and it's absolutely one of my favorite cars. It handles ridiculously well. Uh, it's pretty much built for the track from the factory, but the owner uh, has done a lot of stuff to it. Uh, check that episode out. I think you'll like it a lot. Matter of fact, I probably will add it to one of the end screens uh, at the end of this, this episode. But I, I, this car inspires driver confidence. And just my personal experience, just taste and, and feel and emotion, I would put this up there with a car like the Huracan Performante. Matter of fact, I'd like to see those two cars go head to head. This specific one with its modifications against a car like that. Uh, the owner is a hell of a good driver. We took it out to Sebring, drove it around. I, I, there's not enough good things uh, that I can say about this car. Every time I see it at a show or go back and watch the episode again, uh, getting to be in this car on a track or just driving it on the street, it really just, uh, it's, it's awesome. And right here we have this Aston Martin DB9, not a spy is what the license plate says. Great car, naturally aspirated V12. We had one of these on the show. Uh, these are great cars. This actually kind of represents some of the last of their naturally aspirated vehicles. Uh, you can tell this one's a little older, has an in-dash CD player, which is perfectly fine uh, by me. Great looking car, a real step forward in terms of not only design, but performance, reliability for Aston Martin. I really like the DB9, something I would definitely think about picking it up if it was in my price range. And right next to it, we have an Aston Martin DB11. This is a twin turboed 12 cylinder car. I got to tour the Aston Martin production facility 
uh, and it was a lot of fun. We have a firing order episode about that, so hit that subscribe button and go look at that. Uh, absolutely love these cars. Uh, it's interesting. The cars are, are dramatic and, and styled very well, but they have they're getting more and more flamboyant with their interiors and. The stitching right here is, is fantastic throughout the car, but what, what's interesting is you can do all these wild combinations, and I learned a lot by touring the production facility. And if you want to do really crazy, really wild stuff with your, your DB9 or your Vantage, they will pretty much do whatever you want uh, because they have the Q program, so that they do the one-off, very custom stuff. But great car, love the Aston Martins, you all know that. You saw my Aston Martin hat in the beginning of this video. Spin around here, and another one of my favorite brands is Lamborghini. This would be an Inventador 700 horse, so 700 horsepower, all-wheel drive. Uh, looks like this one has been wrapped. Uh, it, it, it may be uh, entirely wrapped. I don't know what the original color is, but you can see the black that runs right down there. Uh, that's not uh, a factory thing as far as I know, but great looking car naturally aspirated b12 puts out 700 horsepower like i stated it's also just such a just a dramatic uh, and stunning car to look at uh, we have we have one of these now we don't have one of these roadsters with the removable top on our show we had a hard top car but driving this the driving the adventador was the first lamborghini that i ever drove and i'm going to tell you right now it is life-changing it's a it's a world unto itself since then i've driven several several lamborghinis and each one has been massively impressive and i love this car because it's it's it's, it's a bit of a big car you know the huracan is is, is, is a smaller car uh but i love this car because it's it's got the v12 naturally aspirated it's got that beautiful sound it's big it's in your face it's not subtle at all you know it's very fighter jet uh, inspired if you follow us on social media before this show happens i say reach out to me let me know uh, what car you're bringing and I'll show a little extra love a little extra attention and that is the case right here with this gorgeous One of one orange Audi for the United States market now this car has been around the world it has uh, uh, It was originally sold here in the States uh, And it was a one of one Then uh, somebody from Dubai bought it took it to Dubai and then this owner actually found it on eBay of all sites and he was a little skeptical, you know, he, he was impressed with the car, but he found it on eBay and it was a legit car, a good buy. So it's back here in the United States, one of one in this great orange color. Uh, it kind of reminds me of a push up pop or some orange Julius, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, a really neat and unique color. Uh, I, I like the Audis, I think they make a great car, but a lot of Audis that you see on the road, with the exception of the R8, are silver, black, uh, white, uh, things like that. You know, your your kind of typical, average everyday colors. Uh, this is not. This stands out. It looks great. It looks like uh, uh, a really tasty push-up pop. <laughs> but no, very nice. Um, really, just a, a good-looking car. And uh, aftermarket wheels there, but they they do the car justice. Uh, they're they 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 match the car very very well. You know how sometimes. You know, you see wheels and you're like, you think, well, what were they thinking? Uh, that's not the case here. These look great. Uh, windows are deeply tinted, but look right there. And you see that stick shift. So that also makes this car very, very awesome. Uh, I know many of y'all out there like the manual cars, as do I. So seeing this out here today is great. So like I said, when I post on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or even YouTube, uh, and I say, let me know what you're bringing. This is what you get. We're going to show a little extra attention and love to your car. Right here, we've got the guy who started this car show, his McLaren 570S. We actually uh, had his 911 Turbo on the show, uh, but he got rid of the 911 Turbo and got this, and he's, uh, he loves it. He's got nothing but good things to say about it. Uh, really nice car. Definitely need to get a McLaren on the show. Uh, they do just such bang up work. I think their favorite, uh, or my favorite modern car right now is the 720S. And we come over here, we've got a BMW Z8. Now, if you're into movies, like I'm into movies, uh, you can see this car in The World Is Not Enough. It's one of the Pierce Brosnan and James Bond movies. Uh, I actually really like that film. And of course, uh, sadly, this car does not have machine guns or rocket launchers like it does in that movie. 
but it, uh, it's a great car. Really kind of unique interior design with the gauges in the center but angled towards the driver. It's a stick shift car. Uh, the key right there goes right up in the dash. Very interesting and kind of a, a bizarre layout, but neat because it's unique. Uh, and it, I, I personally really like the styling of the car. I mean, it's a modern car or modern-ish. You know, it's, it's been out for a while, but it still looks fantastic. There's something classic about how this looks. I, I, I can't quite pin it down, but they brought in enough classic BMW aesthetics to kind of just really make the car pop. And right here, we've got a friendly dog and uh, of course you can bring your dogs to this show they're they're very much welcome cute critter oh you see something else probably another dog not interested in me <laughs> so right here we got a uh, mercedes-benz with a twin turbo b8 beautiful car uh just it's it's a beast of a vehicle i really like it uh it's got this huge long front end but the engine is set back uh, behind the front wheels so technically you could call it a mid-mount if you wanted to like a mid-mount front engine um, a lot of people think that a mid-mount only says oh if it's a mid-mount it only has to be in the back no that's not really the case uh, of course AMG makes outstanding motors for companies like Aston Martin for the Vantage and the engine option for the DB11 uh, they make uh, a one-of-a-kind motor for Pagani, the Huayra specifically right now, and they provide a lot of other parts to, to uh, other manufacturers. Uh, the interior on this is absolutely stunning. Uh, uh, the, the layout, the leather, the, the brush aluminum. Uh, some of the infotainment system may look like it's uh, sort of derived from Aston Martin, but you've got that backwards. Aston Martin buys the previous generation infotainment system and puts it in their cars from Mercedes. So, and I think there's another car company that does that, but their name escapes me right now. But great looking car, very dramatic styling. And this color combination is fantastic. So I like the, this cream white, the red top, which is down right now, but the red does run throughout the car a little bit on those seat belts right there. And it's just enough of a detail to really make it work. Got some more British firepower here with this Aston Martin GT, 4.7 liter V8. Uh, these cars are, are surprisingly affordable, especially the Vantage models themselves. Um, great car. I was really surprised what you could pick these up for, but they're really stunning. This is sort of Aston Martin's resurgence, or at least that's what I call it. When they start to make this car and the DB9, they were really pushing design, technology forward, uh, quality builds. And this car is no exception. Uh, it's a stick shift and you can still get these. You can find them in stick shift like this owner right here, and that's what I like. You know, I, I respect modern cars and all the technology, but I like an in-dash CD player and a stick shift. That's, that's just my thing. And these cars are something just really fantastic. And it's good to see them out here. And once again, people here, Aston Martin, think, oh, it's unattainable for me. But really look at some, and there's good deals to be had out there. Now this car right here is really really gorgeous uh, I do like the darker color on this body style on this Vantage right here and you can see that this one has the optional uh, traveling luggage kit there so I don't know what you put in everything you maybe put a little liquor in there right I prefer bourbon pretty nice now this is an automatic car or, you know, you, you can uh, use the paddle shifts there if you want. But I, I really dig these cars a lot. And I do like the darker color. It's just a personal preference. So a lot of people like those cream whites, those pure white color cars. But this is, uh, this is a great looking car. And you may have noticed it on the GT, but if you look right here, Final Inspector. That's on all Aston Martins. Uh, and it's, it's just a nice, neat little touch. These cars are handmade uh, to a certain extent. We talked a little earlier about how I toured the Aston Martin production facility, I would highly recommend uh, if you ever get that opportunity to do it. If you want to know how to get in and do it, check out our firing order episode on that. And right here, we've got a big Bentley four-door with a W12 engine. It's been a while since I've seen one of these. And we're gonna take a quick little detour, a little American muscle pull in. So great car here. Like I said, W12 power, very dramatic, but very cool styling inside. 
I like the, 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 the knobs and, and the chrome and just everything's very tactile and, and really neat to the touch. Now, you can see it a little bit on some of the knobs there, they're textured. That's really cool. Uh, in the new GT, uh, the GTC cars that they're making, everything has this textured material to it. Uh, and it's just a nice touch. Uh, but this is a great, a great looking car, very dramatic in styling. You know, very, very in your face, but that's a good thing. These cars are not meant to be subtle. So I was here a little bit earlier taking some photos of these cars, which you can find on our Instagram page or the complete album on our Facebook page. But this is a Honda Accord crew here. So each one is modified just a little bit differently. Uh, very nice people. They let me get a, uh, a full shot of all the cars lined up. I believe one has either moved or has left today. That's okay though. We got we got photos of it, but uh, you know they've done a lot of styling. Uh, I actually really like the blue with those sort of brush aluminum uh, silver wheels there. I think that's a really good combination. Uh, I think a lot of people would have put black wheels on that and that would have been just fine. Uh, I personally kind of like that, that higher contrast or that, that brighter look of those brushed aluminum wheels. Uh, so these cars have uh, lots of styling and things done to them, aftermarket wheels and tires. I'm sure there's a lot more that's been done to each of these cars, but it's nice to see just an entire team of enthusiasts out here with these cars. Right here we've got a Pontiac G8 with a 6 liter LS2 rear wheel drive also known as a Holden Commodore. This car actually was manufactured in Australia then, then modified by putting the wheel on our side for the US market. Sadly, of course, you know, Pontiac is no longer in business and that's a crying shame. Thank you, federal government. But uh, you have people out here like this with these cars keeping it alive and, and, and keeping these cars in great condition and modifying them. And right here we have another generation of a Holden Commodore sold in America as the Chevy SS with an LS3 engine. Uh, a hell of a good car. Once again, still real wheel drive. Uh, you can either put the Holden badges like this one has on aftermarket or an owner actually told us that it was uh, something you could have optioned to keep the Holden Lion on there. We actually had a pro-charged version of one of these on our show. Definitely check that out. I think you'll like it very, very much. Of course, at this show, all are welcome. And we have a smart car here, but a very stylized smart car. Uh, I guess it's called Passion or The Passion. It's right there uh, in this um, matte silver color with these black and orange accented seats. Very cool looking. You know, it's neat to see a car out here like this. It's neat to see a car out here like this on the road. It's got a stick shift. It's a very small car. It's a convertible. But I want to tell you something. A lot of people think that it has to be big or that if it's small, it's somehow automatically less safe. That's really not the case. Uh, size is not a 100% determining factor in how safe you are in a vehicle. Uh, living small, that's pretty funny. But a, a great looking car. Has a neat little pattern right here in the taillights. Pretty neat. That's a neat looking car. And I mean, I've never driven one, but uh, I'm glad that they're taking these cars and making them a little bit more stylish and, and putting some neat uh, touches and details on them. I think this is great. Right here, we have this highly customized GTI. Once again, this is another example of someone reaching out to me before the show, responding to our, our posts on social media and saying, hey, will you car, uh, cover my car? Give it a little extra attention. And that's what happened here. So very wild car. Uh, I actually do really like the, the style of these wheels with that chrome lip and that copper style to it. Now, and it looks like he's got uh, Porsche uh, calipers on there. Now, the owner of this sent me a list of modifications and he sent it to me last night, so I could commit all of it to memory. In fact, I would have to read it several times over to see everything that this car has. But it's got the stance, but it's really clean. Uh, you know, we just went in close up on the wheels. Obviously, they're detailed, very nice. Uh, the fender flares here uh, are well applied. Uh, the, the, the vinyl graphics that run down the side, the carbon fiber engine cover. So this definitely has a lot going for it. So it's uh, it's a very clean build. You can see they've added carbon fiber all throughout the vehicle. Now, of course, the fender flares and everything kind of goes around the car is probably aftermarket. Uh, but I'm going to assume that the carbon fiber put here is aftermarket as well. So, but it looks like it's got some performance upgrades uh, as well of a, as a lot of styling. So very cool looking car and it's all tied together really nice. Um, 
check out those seats. It's got the, I, I, I was it, not plaid, but it's just got a real neat kind of look to it. Uh, this car is stick shift. Of course, you know, we like manuals here on this show. But everything ties together very, very well. Uh, there's no weird color combination. It all is just tied together very well from a, a visual and aesthetic standpoint. Um, uh, I really like it, and I'm glad that this owner reached out to me. That's why I always encourage you all to, one, subscribe to us on YouTube so you can see episodes. Uh, we also do posts there, and you should get those in your feed or on your home page, uh, letting you know that we come out to shows like this, and also Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We've got a very custom Daytona here today. Really nice car. Uh, we've, we've featured this before, but I always like to give it a little love because I love those, those yellow uh, accents that run throughout the vehicle. And it, like I said, I always like it when someone takes a car that is very popular like this one. There's a lot of them on the road, but they really, really take the time to make it their own. They've got some uh, flashing lights here while it's parked. They've put that yellow on the tail lights as well. Very cool looking. And, and I, I gotta say, I really dig it. And the Mopar guys always come to the shows in force. You've got demons and Hellcats and, and scat pack cars. You've got a ton of stuff here. Really, really neat stuff. Uh, these cars are big and dramatic. I really like the wheels uh, on this car. And it, once again, these cars are very aggressive, very powerful modern cars that you could drive every day if you wanted to. And right here, we got a classic Plymouth pulling in. Which is sounding very nice. I shut up there for just a second because the sound of the car is better than the sound of my voice. And we have got some more Mopar here. That's cool. That's a good looking car. Now I like the late model stuff just like a lot of people do, but these classics are, 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 are neat. And to see them out here and in such good condition is awesome. So you've got 392 powered cars. Uh, you've got that shaker hood there, which is functional. Uh, I love the green on this. Uh, we had a Hellcat recently on our show, the flagship show, Combustion Chamber, and they had the what I call peanut butter seats. I'm sure that's not what Dodge calls it. Uh, it's a Hellcat, stick shift, a ton of fun to drive, but I love this classic green. It's, it's a color that they sold in the 60s or 70s, and they brought it back. There you go. And they brought it back uh, uh, for these late models, and it looks very, very good uh, on both uh, the Challenger and the Charger. And of course, we have another SRT car here in that sort of ash gray color. You know, we saw a Porsche over there with a lighter gray color, but this this kind of color is popular through through a lot of manufacturers' lineup. Uh, you know, exotics, muscle. Uh, it, it's it's just something that a lot of people are gravitating towards, which is which is fine, and it looks good when you've got that red interior to kind of set it off. So you can have a mixed lineup as well. You've got your Mopar, you got your Mustang there. You got your Dodge Viper, which is cool. <laughs> um, you got a whole row of Mustangs, Fiestas and Focuses. We're going to check those out in just a second. You've got this Dodge Magnum here. Now, usually this is the only Magnum I've seen at any show in this area. Uh, and it's really cool to see with the T-tops. You just don't see a lot of these cars out there. In fact, I can't remember the last time I ever saw a Magnum that I can recall from memory until this gentleman started bringing his car to the show. But what's interesting is there is another Magnum here today. So it's pretty rare to see to see one, much less two of these cars. And on our way, oh, the other Magnum left. He was parked right there. He left. Maybe he just parked someplace else. But we do have an old school Toyota Land Cruiser here. That's awesome to see. A classic Ford, two actually uh, classic Ford cars. Uh, and you've got the, 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 the Surf's Up car here. Very cool. Seen this car before at some shows. He's got the surfboard. Uh, he's got the, the, the wood paneling. It's just a very classic looking car. He's got the painted air cleaner there. Uh, very, very neat saying Surf's Up. Now, if you're into older Mustangs, the Fox body look, this is cool. This is a saline car. I've never seen one of these before uh, in person. I've, I've seen videos about them, seen photos. Very cool though. And yeah, there's a lot of Fox bodies out there, but this uh, is really cool. Of course, saline kind of made a name for themselves modifying Mustangs. And uh, of course they did have their S7 
supercar, which actually was powered by a Ford engine. Uh, but they, uh, they did styling and things like this. Did you know that they actually helped to build the Bumblebee from the first Transformers movie? They just had the machines and the know-how to take those designs and build it out. Very cool, though, that this is out here today. Uh, it's just something, you know, you don't see, uh, see very much of. And he's right here with all the other Fords, the Mustangs, the Focuses, the Fiestas. Um, there's a police officer there. Act normal. Act normal, man. Don't do a burnout. <laughs> um, so I know that the Fords and Fiestas have been in the news lately for their automatic transmissions. Uh, we're going we're gonna to try to cover that in a Firing Order episode. Uh, but these guys do have great cars, especially the stick shift cars. They have a loyal following. Each of these guys is super nice to me when I show up. And some of these cars are front wheel drive. Some of them are all wheel drive. This one right here, he actually had one of those engraved art uh, I don't know if you call it a print, but it's it was made and, and it's it's etched in there, and it's pretty neat, and I and I think that's cool. So, uh, a real loyal following. It, it is kind of sad that Ford is no longer making cars for the American market, which means these cars are going away. And it's my understanding these cars were manufactured actually in Germany, but no more for the U.S. market except for the Mustang. So. Uh, that's, that's just the way the things go. It's what people are buying or not buying that determines that. But we come down here and we've got just a whole slew of Mustangs. And once again, like the, like the Focuses, like the Fiestas, everybody kind of does their own thing, makes it their own. They, they may buy a specific package, but then they start to, to modify it and do all sorts of stuff to it. So. And is this the, uh, as we make our way to some General Motors action, I want to stop by here and check out this 488 GTB car. I uh, really like it with the black and the bright red interior. Now, I want you to see something on this car. If I'm not mistaken, does he still have his front lip raised a little bit? Maybe it's just how the car looks. But uh, if you're unaware, some of these cars have the ability to raise and lower the front end so you don't damage the car because they sit so low. So when you come into a car show like this, and there are speed bumps, you can actually raise and lower the front end. Uh, I think the average is two inches, whether it's a Lamborghini or a Ferrari is two inches. As we make our way to the, the GM side of things, we do have another awesome Mopar here, Jim Cameron's uh, Viper here. This is a great car. Now this car, I don't know how many modifications he's made to it, but this track pack is something you can get from Dodge. Now, if, if the name Jim Cameron sounds familiar to you, we had his 2002 red final edition on our show he did a great burnout for a good cause check that episode out that's why you should hit that subscribe button and bell icon for instant notifications when we go live with new episodes such as this really great car once again powered by a naturally aspirated v10 engine big motor big car but uh, he says that this car handles really, really well, and I believe him. Uh, it's interesting to see domestic cars really being track dominators here. And this is also a stick shift powered car. Well, not powered, but driven by a stick shift, which also makes it that much cooler. Very cool. And they say that stickers don't add performance, but I bet that combustion chamber sticker gives you an extra like thousand horsepower, maybe something like that. You should put one on your car, put it on there with pride shoot me a message but uh, great car and of course tent world is out here today and they do some outstanding work of course as promised we're here with the GM side of things Corvettes one of the many groups that's always out here in force uh, you've got your C C7s your C6s including this C6 ZR1 now I think these cars are fantastic but you don't see a whole lot of them out there uh, which is surprising I think when a new generation of Corvette comes out, they seem to forget about the, the older ones uh, very quickly. And that's a shame because the ZR1 is not only a stunning looking car, it's a great performer. Uh, of course, LS9 Supercharged written right there on the top, so you can't miss it. Really good looking. And this is the Centennial version, so you see it's got the 100th anniversary badging uh, that you could get with this car. It's got the uh, transparent hood there. Well, that transparent section so you could see the supercharger mounted on top 
So it's a great looking car. Uh, looks like he's added a wing to the back of it um, and some carbon fiber around there. So uh, maybe the owner uh, tracks this car. Of course, we did talk a little bit today. Very nice guy. So, but, and also, I know that Corvettes get a bad rap for their interior, but the C6, especially uh, the, the, these, uh, the ZR1 cars, they still have a nice interior. Uh, stick shift car, which is awesome. Always awesome. So if you're upset that, you know, matter, uh, modern car manufacturers aren't making stick shift cars, there are cars like this out there just begging to be bought that still have a ton of power. So definitely check those out. And as we make our way down, we have uh, a Camaro here, a ZL1 1LE. You can tell that by the matte black hood. Uh, all these aero components are functional. They uh, are designed with the track in mind. So very awesome car. It's so neat to see the Camaro it has gotten to this point. Unfortunately, now it's being canceled. We did a firing order episode on that. So that's a real shame. But uh, there's still plenty of ones out there to buy uh, and modify and make them your own. Got a Z06 Corvette right here, supercharged. It's the C7. Up down here, we've got another ZL1 1LE. Then we have another ZL1. You can kind of see the difference. The aero components are different. There's not a wing on the back as an example. And the matte black hood, obviously, it's painted on a ZL1. But both are great cars. It just depends on what do you want uh, in a car and what can you afford. So uh, you, you've got that. You've got a regular spoiler back there. And you've got that wing right there. Very nice. So both cars are great. Just depends on what you are looking for. But I would tell you right now, one of my favorite cars is a third gen Camaro. And we have one out here. Uh, interesting, he's got Corvette wheels on it. Uh, but a lot of people did that and still do that to this day. It's a beautiful two-tone car. Uh, two, two shades of silver here. Got the eight ball stick shift there. Very cool car. Uh, it rumbled real nice when it came in. So definitely well, just a well-modified car. Classic power, carbureted. I bet this thing is a ton of fun to drive. I'll be getting squirrely on you too, but you know it's classic muscle. It's a straight line car, which is which is just fine by me. Of course, we have my 04 GTO out here. We've talked about that a little bit. SLP headers and pipe, full can and intake, upgraded the brakes. You know, really like the car. Very happy that I got it. We've got a six gen Camaro here. This would be a 1LE as well, an SS 1LE uh, with that matte black hood. So it's got, it, this is a very track capable car too. It doesn't have to be a ZL1 to be track capable. And a classic lowered slab GMC pickup trip. I, I really like these a lot. Uh, and it's very cool. Uh, some people leave it like this, you know, where the rust is exposed and all of that. Uh, it's just a, just a preference, sort of a rat rod thing. Of course, he's got the modern uh, steering wheel in there, which is very interesting. But uh, very neat and very interesting. And we have a very special treat out here today. We've got the Starsky and a Hutch Ford. Really nice car. Uh, if you're a little younger, you think of the movie. If you're a little older, you think of the TV show. But it was a TV show first. Uh, it was a buddy cop show and to see someone who has taken this car and and done this to it i think is is really awesome uh he's got uh just a ton of work put into it, a ton of hours it's very clean as you can see he's got the faux pistols there and the badges so uh very very cool car should this be on combustion chamber let me know in the comment section below i bet i bet there's gonna be a lot more yes than uh than no there He's even got the, uh, the the police light on there, but just uh, a fantastic vehicle. And I have a thing for movie and TV cars, and this is one of them. It's it's definitely a car of the 70s. It's definitely modified of its era. You know, movie and TV cars back then were not meant to be subtle. You see, it's got the big, the, the stripe there. I believe one of the stars referred to it as a striped tomato, but it's classic. Uh, it looks great. You know, what's it's very much a car of its era, but a lot of movie and TV cars of that era had crazy styling. I mean, think of the 18 van or the Knight Rider Trans Am, but really nice to see this out here today. Just want to get you a little uh, of that, that gorgeous sound there. 
And right here we've got Audi and Volkswagen out here today. And we're starting to make our way, getting ourselves closer to cars from other countries. We did see some imports already today, but we've got a whole slew of RS7s here today, S4s, uh, there's a, a TT down there. It's a very cool car. So these guys have a ton of great stuff out here today. Just really, really neat. Uh, some of these cars, you know, I learned that some of these Audis come in both front wheel and all wheel drive. They have a real loyal following. Some are modified in various different ways. But what's interesting is, is Audis are popular here in this country, but not as much as other brands, uh, it seems like anyways. But the more that I talk to these guys, the more I learn about these cars. And I think that's really fantastic. So here is a Honda Element. All right, so that's a, that's a, a real pimp mobile. <laughs> Actually, this is a Phantom Motorsports and they're just out here today. This is probably what they put their stuff in because you don't want to put your tent and your table uh, in your F430 Spider here. Really nice looking car. One of my favorite Ferrari designs just from a pure aesthetic standpoint. I've driven a F430 uh, hard top. That's been on the show as well. Check that out. That's why I always tell you to hit that subscribe button because we have a huge back catalog of those episodes uh, for you to check out. Gorgeous interior on this one. You know, is this a, a quote-unquote common way to style these cars with this sort of light peanut butter interior with the red exterior? Sure, but it's classic and it works all the time. So, uh, like I said, get, getting a chance to drive one of these was really fantastic. This is before everybody started going with turbos and things like that, so it's a naturally aspirated engine. Just a fantastic, fantastic vehicle. Of course, right here, got a nice little warning right there it's not a middle finger it's a don't touch we've seen some really awesome Porsches already here today but we've got some other ones we've got uh, this beautiful black one here with the uh, dream cars for kids uh, uh, badging there they did a rally recently and then we've got this sort of military green color with the uh, neon green little, little accent around the wheels there very interesting way to to style a Porsche but what's interesting is it works fairly well because you've got this green that is different and unique with that tan interior there. So it actually works itself out really, really well. So we come over here and we've got some BMWs, but I want to take you over to the Nissan Figaro. We actually had this car on our show. Uh, they built it for one year and guess when? Was it the 60s? 70s? No, 1991. It was built in Japan for only one year. It was meant to look this retro style, and we had it on the show. I got to drive this car. Very interesting driving uh, a right-hand drive car, especially you know when, when things are a little different on you know, where you shift and where your turn uh, signal stalks are and the uh, and and your windshield wiper ones. But very classic styling, but 1991 car. Uh, so check out that episode. I think you'll like it very much. A lot of people don't even know this car exists outside of Japan. So when you see it here at a show, or anywhere for that matter, that's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty unique and pretty crazy. So, but uh, like I said, it's got the classic styling, and then when you come up here to the engine, it's got a small turboed engine. Well then you're like, oh, this is not from the 60s. Have a newer BMW SUV out here. Of course, this was bought out by a dealership. Got a very aggressive uh, twin nostril uh, grill there pretty neat stuff and we swing over here and we have uh, well we have one BMW and a whole nice lineup of Porsches it's interesting they line up here as well as on that other row that we saw earlier great cars the 911 Turbo S uh, the Cabriolet there uh, I don't know if they call it a Cabriolet or just a just convertible or spider or whatever but uh, it's it's a, it's a great looking car and I actually like that convertible there so Porsches are fantastic cars. I've really fallen in love with them after having driven some. And BMWs. Now, you know, I've only actually ever driven one BMW. And that's a 1958 BMW IZ up for our show. And absolutely love the car. Um, but these are obviously modern and customized. And done up to the nines. Really like the wrap and wheel combination on this. It's very dramatic. Uh, it's got carbon fiber accents. It's got that sort of almost military green color. Very, very interesting with those kind of orangey, burnt orange wheels. You know, we call it burnt orange in Texas uh, because of a famous university, but uh, I don't know what the actual product name is. And we come over here and we've got the 
uh, retractable hard top there and they've they've kept it up in the halfway position so that's that's pretty neat stuff very neat that cars can do this now with carbon fiber technology it's very lightweight I'm going to assume this entire top end uh, here is is carbon fiber uh, that way it's just so much more easy to deal with in terms of weight and weight distribution when you put it in the back. It's a lot lighter than other materials like steel or aluminum. And in this section, you've got a lot of our JDM cars that come to this show. So you've got your uh, Nissan uh, GTRs, your Infiniti G35s. Uh, the styling of these cars hasn't changed a lot over the years, but people love them. They've got a great and loyal following. Come over here, the G35s that I spoke about earlier, we have one right here. Uh, this is done by a family entire family they have uh, two g35s and a supra the daughter drives the supra actually so you see the interior is very polished very clean uh, a lot of neat work that's been put into this but one of the things i like on this car is uh the work that the family did on the back here so this is done in a house by um by the the, the father the son the daughter actually both sons and daughter and it says exclusive customs but that's their their thing so it's very cool and it's very clean work and uh, I really like it this is uh, the father's car I believe uh, if I remember correctly the 350z here so he's got the wheel off right now he's got that racing wheel that you can just pop on and off um, I know he's wanting to do some more stuff to this I think I, if I remember correctly speaking to him um, but I don't have the exact details committed to memory but like I said, this aisle is going to be a lot of your, your JDM cars. And there's a car over here I want to take a look at real quick. And it's a second gen MR2 here. And I've driven a first gen MR2, which was on our show, uh, which you should check out. It was an 86 MR2. And then a uh, third gen MR2 that had a bunch of suspension work done to it. It was a friend of mine's car. He would autocross it. He would let me autocross it. I absolutely love the MR2. If you're looking for a rear mid-engine mount uh, car that's affordable, check out getting an MR2. You can still get them in a stick shift, obviously. Uh, I know everything's automatic now. In fact, this car is a stick shift car. But definitely look into this, and it's surprisingly practical. Um, but this one's uh, definitely been modified. So it's got a turbo there. Uh, you, can see, you can see the, the pipes coming out. But if I'm not mistaken, when this car is in its stock form, this is also a trunk back here. As well, it looks like he's mounted the intercooler uh, in the back, but very, uh, very neat. Uh, so this car probably got a lot of extra power too. You can see it's got larger wheels on the back, uh, and it looks like larger wheels on the front, right there. But yeah, I really, I really enjoy the MR2 cars. Really, really love them, and I like the styling too. This one seems to have a different stance to it. I don't know if it's sitting higher or it just seems like it's sitting higher with the the wheels and tires. But uh, once again. Fantastic cars, though. I would definitely recommend them. We've got an Infiniti uh, Q50 here. Uh, I've driven one of these uh, uh, quite a bit. Now, this is the twin turboed version. I, I don't know if I drove this one or they've always been turboed, but I drove one of these uh, quite extensively, and I actually really liked it. It's a very comfortable car. Uh, it's got one of my favorite smelling interiors. Um, so uh, I've always liked these cars, actually. Uh, they're pretty nice. And I got, like I said, I got to drive one for a little bit. And, uh, and and really enjoyed it. And we come over here. We got some more 370Zs and 350Zs. We've got one that looks like it's been wrapped in a very bright blue color. Very interesting stuff all the way around. Of course, Subaru, Scion, more Subarus. But lots of uh, just crazy import styling. And some of it very subtle. Now, I've never seen this before. That's that MR2 over there. This is a very, uh, very interesting uh, little compact uh, hatchback. Is it a four-door? It is. It is a four-door. Come over here, and there's the handle right there. Pretty neat. Oh, it's a juke. Okay. For some reason, I guess just the way it was styled and everything, I just didn't, I just don't see a lot of jukes on the road. Maybe I'm just not paying attention, but pretty neat looking. Of course, we got a Tacoma here. 
usually when you see imports and, and things in the import section, Tacoma is not what you typically see, but uh, Toyota has a great reputation for making a great truck. So this would be a four by four. Looks like he's got the aftermarket wheels and tires on it. Not sure what else has been done. But like I said, the great thing about this show is it benefits the Morris Children's Hospital and all are welcome. So you can have a truck, a car, whatever. It doesn't have to be foreign. It doesn't have to be domestic. It doesn't have to be exotic. So got another G35 here, a beautiful blue. I love this blue on this BMW. Not sure what they call it, uh, but this car, uh, I bet it's a lot of fun to drive. It's very small uh, in, in comparison to like a bigger four-door car, but I bet it handles uh, pretty well, uh, pretty nimble, I would imagine, or probably could be modified to make very nimble, just given its platform and the overall size and weight of the vehicle. So a much later model BMW, and uh, we've got a Supra and a Mitsubishi here. Let's go in and check out that Supra here. Definitely got some aftermarket firepower on this one. And the little engine dress up there. Very cool. The Supras, of course, you have a credibly loyal following. I'm, I'm curious to see how enthusiasts take to the new Supra. But uh, I've driven a Supra recently and, uh, and really liked it. And it had a really interesting feel on the interior. They had these big gauges. It has a wraparound dash for the driver. And once you're in a car like this, you really begin to understand, uh, understand the feel of the car and probably why it was liked uh, so, so much. Uh, and of course, another stick shift car. I hope you enjoyed today's Combustion Chamber Live. If I referenced an episode specifically, chances are it's right here on the screen. I want to thank our sponsor today for their support. And also, I want to remind you, hit that subscribe button and bell icon for instant notifications when we go live with new episodes such as this. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you really love us, support us on Patreon.